How do we apply equilibrium concepts to acids and bases? Uh, it's obviously a very important part of aqueous solutions, and acids and bases are a pretty important type of aqueous solution. So let's think about it in terms of acids first. So if I have some acid, let's just call it HA in aqueous solution. HA, that acid, interacts with water to give us H3O plus and A minus. So this is really the heart of how acids, especially weak acids, function in aqueous solution. There are a lot of things we can point out here. Um, one idea that's very important for us to think about is the idea of conjugates. So if we think about this, we can use, um, you know, let's use a Bronsted-Lowry type definition of acids and bases. An acid is an H plus donor. A base is an H plus acceptor. So in my equilibrium up here, what is happening with HA as it goes through this reaction? It is losing H plus, right? So we've got HA losing H plus to become a base, which if we go the other direction, A minus is behaving like a base. So HA and A minus are a conjugate acid base pair. Same thing can be said of water. What's happening to the water molecule? It's accepting an H plus. That means that it's acting as a base in this reaction. But if we look at the reverse reaction, H3O plus is donating an H plus to get back to the other side. So these are conjugate pairs. And conjugate pairs uh, help us really understand how acids work when they're essentially just transferring this H plus back and forth. So our conjugate pairs in this case, and I don't wanna have to keep switching. Our conjugate pairs are HA, and A minus, that's one conjugate pair, and H3O plus and H2O. That's the other conjugate pair in this reaction. So we've got an acid reacting with a base to give us an acid and a base. How does that work in terms of equilibrium? Really thinking about this reaction going in both directions, we have to think about, especially with weak acids, we have to think about where that equilibrium lies. How effectively does this HA donate its H plus to water to make H3O plus? Thinking about that, let me get a little bit of space cleared up here. Again, let's start from the same place. I've got HA plus water gives me H3O plus and A minus. The position of this equilibrium should tell us a lot about the character of that particular weak acid. So I can write an equilibrium constant expression. K is equal to, well, H3O plus at equilibrium times A minus at equilibrium all over HA concentration at equilibrium. Remember, although water appears in this reaction as we have it written, 
water does not appear in the equilibrium constant expression because pure solids and liquids don't appear in equilibrium constant expressions. So now we can look at this and the more product favored this reaction is, the more our acid is acting like an acid. And this is specifically Ka because this generic form works for any acid. This is an acid dissociation constant. So this gives us another way of interpreting the strength of acids and bases. Remember back in Gen Chem 1 we talked about strong acids, weak acids, but now what do we mean by a strong acid? And a strong acid is something that back in Gen Chem 1 we said completely dissociates. If we think about that in terms of equilibrium, a strong acid Well, in equilibrium terms, a strong acid has Ka greater than 1, which just means that this is product favored. A weak acid has Ka less than 1. It's reactant favored. So now we have a more uh, nuanced way to think about strong and weak acids. It's not just two buckets that we throw everything into, either strong or weak. It's how strong and how weak. If I have a strong acid with let me move this up a little bit. If I have HA1 with a Ka of 25 and I have HA2 with a Ka of 280, well, these are both strong acids, but this one is definitely the stronger of the two. So that's how we can use equilibrium to understand acids a little bit better and, and really become more sophisticated in the way we describe strong and weak acids. Mm -hmm.